Fiesta on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. The haziness is even heavier in Fargo-Moorhead. Not exactly the sight we want to see to start the holiday weekend. Thank you for joining us. I'm Krista Baim. A hazy day in Fargo-Moorhead as wildfires in Canada affect us here at home. And it's not just those with respiratory illnesses that need to be aware of it. Let's go to meteorologist Hutch Johnson now to check if there are clear skies in sight. Hutch? Thanks so much. Uh, as we head into the evening hours and into our holiday weekend, that smoke has really found itself lowering down to the ground, mixing into the surface air, and it's causing uh, some levels to be elevated throughout the southern Red River Valley, southeast North Dakota, and Lakes Country, where you see the red on the map in front of you. This is high enough levels for even those who are healthy to uh, even feel the issues going on. And we've heard from a lot of you online about the uh, respiratory problems that you've been having, headaches and the like. It's very thick out there. Here's a look at that jet stream. It continues to blow in from the northwest. The difference is today, a lot of that smoke mixed down to the ground. You can smell it. You can taste it in the air. Your planning forecast for this evening shows that that dangerous level of smoke sticks around on the 4th of July. There will be smoke and haze as well. Hopefully a little bit of an increase in those surface winds will help flush some of that out. But late on our 4th of July and into Sunday, storms blow through. There will be a shift, and I think we can wave goodbye to some of this haze. Crystal, I'll have hour-by-hour hour details on all of that, including where I think those storms will initiate and when, coming up here in a moment. All right, thank you so much, Hutch. The hazy skies have stuck around all week, and some are concerned that the smoke will disrupt the holiday. Some people at Lindenwood Park thought that the haze was actually fog because of just how thick it is. Valley News Live Storm Team meteorologist Robert Hahn explains the wind is expected to change to not impact your outdoor plans for the 4th of July. So as long as those fires continue to burn, we're going to continue to see some of that smoke. The good news is the upper winds aloft that have been northwest to keep bringing that smoke in, they're expected to change as we head through the holiday weekend. And by Monday, we're hoping that those upper level winds change. And to keep up to date with the weather and how the skies will look for your fireworks festivities, make sure you download the Valley News Live weather app. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store. It's a new twist on an old scam that's targeting people in the Valley. You want a new car or thousands of dollars from publisher clearinghouse sweepstakes. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop spoke with one woman who did not fall for the scam, but is warning others to be aware because they know more about you than you think. Just days ago, Liz McWilliams received an interesting call. Congratulations, you've just won $2,500,000. I said, oh. And he said, you also won a Mercedes-Benz. The man said his name was Benjamin Bush, and he was the general manager of Publisher Clearinghouse. Then I'd have to come up with $3,750 for shipping and handling of my Mercedes-Benz. It was your typical scam call. You must pay for the shipping and handling fees to get your money or car. But this is where the scam took on a new twist. Well, yes, they knew my address, and they said they'd be coming by this house this afternoon. And I said, well, I said, I'll be busy. That's right. The scammer knew Liz's address and who lived with her. They said a person would come to her home and take her to the bank. No one did ever show up. The Better Business Bureau says this common scam is something that many people are not familiar with and add that addresses are available online, just like in the phone book. The BBB reminds people that you would never have to pay up front for winnings and that you can't win contests you never enter. Liz figured out the call was a scam and wants others to not fall for it. There's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> There's always a gimmick to something. Near Grand Forks, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. McWilliams says two of her friends also received similar calls recently. And to find out more information, you can click on this story on valleynewslive.com. And if you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline and we'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. A 24-year-old man is dead after a head-on crash in Stutzman County early this morning. The Highway Patrol says the victim was driving southbound on Highway 52, a few miles north of Pingree, when he drifted into the oncoming lane. 
A semi pulling a trailer drove onto the shoulder to avoid the crash, but hit the victim's car and ended up in the ditch. The highway was shut down for two hours. The crash remains under investigation. It's Friday and time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say David Barr is wanted for failure to appear for burglary, criminal conspiracy and criminal mischief charges. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information on LAR. Many of us are already on the road or soon leaving home for the 4th of July weekend. Unfortunately, it's a fact known by many thieves. The number of burglaries, break-ins and thefts climbs during warm weather. In order to make sure your home and property are safe, you need to be especially vigilant during the summer months as thieves become much more active. Make sure your property is locked up and enlist the help of neighbors and friends. The biggest thing uh, with the 4th of July weekend is uh, if you're going to be leaving town, maybe check with your neighbors and see who is staying around and just have them keep an extra eye out. And anything, you know, laying around the yard or kind of not locked up, be a good idea to lock it. Lock your sheds, lock your bikes up. Sergeant Jacobson says another good security option for the exterior of your home are motion detector lights. And Wheel of Fortune is coming to Fargo and you could be a contestant. The wheel, the wheel Mobile event will take place during two special days of contestant searches. The event is sponsored by Shooting Star Casino and will take place at Shields Arena. Come and audition to be on Wheel of Fortune this July. For details and rules, you can visit our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on the Contest tab. Each year before the 4th of July, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission holds an event on the National Mall to show the dangers of fireworks and stress, just how important firework safety is. Washington cor correspondent Kelly Meyer has some tips to keep you safe this holiday weekend. Just a reminder, this video is only a demonstration. People from across the U.S. are heading here to the National Mall to celebrate our nation's birthday and watch the big fireworks show. But before that happens, I'm asking a few of them how they practice their own fireworks safety back at home. I think it's all about that you know how to use them. Just follow what you're supposed to do with them. Be smart. Common sense it goes a long ways. That's the answer I got from many on the National Mall, but I'm stopping to show them what happens when you don't follow what you're supposed to do. Oh my God. Okay. Those were just mannequins, but the situations they're in could happen in real life. The demonstration is put on by the U.S. Consumer Product and Safety Commission every 4th of July to remind people how dangerous fireworks can be. I'm asking some folks just how many people they think are injured around this time of year. 400. I'm sure there's a lot because I've seen some pretty foolish things done with fireworks. On average, 230 people go to the emergency room every day with firework-related injuries. That's just in the 4th of July month alone. I would advocate that all parents tell their kids in advance of the fireworks what they're allowed to do and what they're allowed not allowed to do. Do you like fireworks? Yes. Addison Fouts may only be five years old, but she knows what to do around fireworks at her home back in Erie, Pennsylvania. To be careful with them and take them, and take them somewhere that uh, a lot of people aren't. We teach them you have to hold it away from you and you shouldn't be near anyone else and just to make sure that you're, you're using them in a safe way. By remembering some of these tips, these families can have a happy and safe 4th of July. Reporting on the National Mall, I'm Kelly Meyer. According to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, 11 people were killed and more than 10,000 were injured by fireworks in 2014. Here's some tips before you head out to your cookout. First, never relight a dud if the firework doesn't ignite the first time. Leave it alone. Second, always have a water source nearby. And third, once you're done with the firework, douse that with water so you don't have a garbage fire. And for more firework safety tips, you can go to cpsc.gov fireworks. And a reminder to folks in the Valley that fireworks are not allowed in many communities. Police in the FM area had another busy night of calls about fireworks being set off in town. They're illegal in Fargo city limits, and Moorhead allows only sparklers in town. In West Fargo, people can shoot off fireworks from 8 a.m. tomorrow until midnight. They're also allowed on New Year's Eve in West Fargo. The Red River Valley Fair is less than a week away, and this year, one farm animal will be missing. 
Chickens, ducks, and geese will not be allowed at the fairgrounds this year due to bird flu. The fair still wants children to have the opportunity to learn about chickens, so they bought fake chickens and chicks. The fake animals cost about $400 and will be in the education center. Many fairs across the United States have done similar things. Fair officials say they are using the bird flu situation as a learning experience. And so it's kind of a learning opportunity, and people don't see all the economic impact that um, somebody that raises turkeys and chickens is going through, or the person the next level down that provides them with the shavings. You know, uh, it's kind of a cyclical thing that goes all the way down into different categories. So um, it's kind of a learning opportunity for us also. Next year, they hope to have chickens back at the fairgrounds. All other farm animals will be available. Schultz says they just had piglets born this week. They will be showing at the fair. And later on Valley News Live at uh, tonight, looking for some fun for the kids for the 4th of July, Bonanzaville has you covered. Overall dry weather here in the northern plains as smoke continues to blow in. Thunderstorms in your weekend forecast. I'll tell you when and where coming up right after this.